Hi everyone, uh, we just, uh, Megan's doing her first live Google Hangout, so I'm just showing her the ropes. We'll just um, get as many people as we can on board, but we do respect your time. Thank you so much for being here. My passion really is to empower um, women in business to be able to learn the latest tools and strategies to grow their business. So. I'm Melissa Groom, I'm the founder of Empowered Mums. I'm also a video marketing strategist and I've got one of our members here today, Megan Gibson, who is a social media mentor and co-founder of Mega Media Mentors with her husband, Brett Gibson. So thank you so much for joining us, Megan. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So, um, yes, we're going to talk today about how to rock it on Instagram. So whether you're a total newbie or you are already on the platform, Megan has got um, systems and actions for you to do. There has been a workbook that she's put together for you, which if you go into the comments underneath this Google Hangout, you'll be able to get a copy of that and download it. So thank you for doing that, Megan, okay. because a lot of people will go out there and educate themselves and write down all these notes when they go to talks or online webinars. Um, if you're joining us, if you could just mute your, um, mute your microphone, that would be great. Um, thank you, ladies, for joining us. Hi, ladies. But uh, the reason we have the workbook is so that you can print it out and then you can write, your, write down your notes and then you can go away and spend the time to implement these changes and and we would love your feedback so Absolutely. you know connect with Megan on um, on Instagram mm -hmm. and Facebook Definitely. and let her know the changes that you've made and and the successes that you've had and if you've got any questions in particular it'd be great to just pop them down below as well because Megan will be doing I'm sure some Facebook okay. lives or oh, if we can't answer the questions today that you'll give her amazing content for um, you know her videos moving forward. So thank you everyone for joining us. If you could just mute your microphones, that would be fantastic. So we don't get the background noise. So if you're just jumping on board, I'm Melissa Groom from Empowered Mums, and this is our um, guest speaker today, Me Megan Gibson from Mega Media Mentors, who is the co-founder of. Um, Mega Media Mentors. <laughs> Sorry. I know, it's a mouthful. Yes, with her <laughs> husband, Brett Gibson. So thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get stuck into the presentation now. We're going to share um, the screen with you. So you won't see us, but you'll hear Megan talking. And as I said, if you've got any questions, please put them on the Google Plus page there and make sure you've downloaded your workbook. You've got it there printed out. And I believe, Megan, you've got something special for them um, that we can mention at the end too. So please stick around. Um, we'll be making sure we finish on time um, to respect your time. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, so we're just going to share the screen now. And um, thank you, everyone, for coming. No, I think somebody's just got their microphone. If you could mute your microphone, that would be fantastic because we are recording this um, for other viewers. Fabulous. So, Mel, it's such a pleasure to be here and there's nothing like stepping out of the comfort zone a little bit and doing something you haven't done before. Um, and I'm excited to be chatting to you all about uh, Instagram because it is by far my favourite platform. Um, just, just mute your microphone down the bottom. Um, that way we don't have any interference now. Yeah. yeah, awesome, fabulous. So. I would love to know in the chat um, who is on Instagram and who is using it for their business because, you know, a lot of people have a personal platform but actually using it for business is a little bit different because you want to have a bit a more of a strategy and be attracting a particular type of audience. So 
it's, it'll be good to see that as we go along just who's actually there. I'm going to be concentrating on what I'm saying so I won't yeah. be answering the question. Maybe they can yet. put their um, link to their Instagram page. That would be awesome. Yeah, we can, yeah. Let, we can see who's here and, and connect with you guys online as well. Absolutely. So this is our brand and you'll see as I go along and show you we love the black, the white and the pink. And one thing about having a rocking brand on Instagram is standing out. And so I'm going to share with you today a number of things that are going to set you apart and really start to uh, position you as more of an authority in what you do. So what we're going to cover is we're going to look at, as I said, setting yourself up for business on Instagram. We're also going to talk about branding to stand out. I know my presentation well, I've already said those two things. <laughs> We're also going to talk about content and hashtags uh, because obviously that is the main, uh, you know, that's what you're going to be seeing and what you're going to be posting. We're going to talk about the algorithm. Now, one thing with Insta is that <laughs> there never used to be an algorithm. You used to see everything that your followers had posted or that you had, whoever you were following, you would see everything they posted. And it was in chronological order, just like the old Facebook days. But Facebook has bought Instagram, if you didn't know that. And so as goes the father, so goes the son. <laughs> There's now an algorithm on Instagram. So there are some things you need to think about um, when you're you know, positioning yourself there. And then I'm going to give you some examples and some hot tips at the end. Basically looking at some people that are already crushing it on Instagram, they've already got their brand rocking and they're getting results. So there's no point in reinventing the wheel here, guys. We want to do what works. And if you can come up with something of your own, that's even better. But modelling is the way to go. Now the other thing I am going to mention quickly is that this is all um, about testing and measuring just like everything else. So we're going to have a little look at some of the basics because I am not sure if we've got really, really new people. I'm sure we have. We've probably got some of you that know all of this already. But uh, there's always room for more knowledge. So let's look at some of the basics. Now this is a 100% mobile platform. So what you'll notice is the only place that you can post to Instagram is on your phone. So there's a few things that are different about Instagram. You can go and look at Instagram on your computer, but you can't actually post from there. So I thought I'd start first of all. Someone might just need to put their microphone in. There's a bit of feedback coming through. If you can check uh, the microphone for me, that would be awesome. We're going to have to un. Sorry, everyone. I'm just going to get out of this screen and. Yeah. We're going to mute it. <laughs> Who's in trouble? <laughs> it's all learning, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. All good now. There we go. Easy. Ah, that's better. Back to sh back to here. Which one? This one? Yep. Okay. And present. Sorry guys. All fixed. Love it. All right. So where was I? Basics. Let's start at the beginning. So what you're seeing here is the explore feed. So I'm going to show you a little bit about where things are. So when you want to go and look for new things to follow yourself or you want to see things, you know, find new people to follow, you come into the explore feed. Now that's where the little microphone, uh, microphone, microphone on my brain, the little micro magnifying glass next to the little house here. So that is where you will find all new content and content from people that is similar to who you already follow. Instagram now has videos that can go for 60 uh, seconds, so one minute, and they will start to suggest videos to you that you might like to watch based on the things that you already like. So videos that you've already been watching, people that you, you know, already like, 
similar things to that. And that's really cool because, you know, they're going to intuitively find things to continue to put more content in front of you and that you like. Now, what does that mean for your audience? That means that if you're doing Instagram um, and using it for your business, that you're, if you're using the right hashtags and you're getting lots of engagement, that your videos, if you're posting videos, are going to pop up in this section as well, which is pretty cool. Now, um, apologies, some of the things, <laughs> the little pictures that are uh, on that screenshot are a little bit funny. Sometimes they're going to suggest things to you that you don't want to follow and that's perfectly fine and there is a way that you can um, start to correlate, correlate that for yourself. So that's the explore feed and you can literally just click on here and look and like other people and add to your followers. On the right here, you'll see uh, at the top, if you click into the search button, Uh, you can actually go and search for uh, particular keywords or hashtags or topics and things like that that people you, you want to actually search for. Now, this is a really good way to find hashtags and things like that that are going to work for you. So you can look for people, you can look for tags, you can look for locations, you can search all sorts of things up in there just like you would if you're on Google. And that's one of the great things about Instagram is that it's all curated by those hashtags. So then you've got this section here. So this is the home feed and this is all the people that you've liked or followed as it's called on Instagram. Their posts are going to pop up in here as you know as they post and now as I said there's an algorithm as to what they show you. This is a gorgeous picture. I love this actual um, one of my favorite uh, people to follow at the moment, Travels Post. And up the top you'll see there's also the new stories feature which we're going to touch on later. And on the right hand side, you can see this is your own profile. So this is what you see when you click on your little logo, your, your profile picture down in the bottom right. This is what you see. So you can see the posts, the followers, the following and your bio, etc. and all the posts that you've posted. So that's just a few little basics so you know your way around. Um, just before I head move over, just there's just seven reasons why I think Instagram absolutely rocks as a platform, and that is that I already mentioned it's a hundred percent mobile app. It's also a highly engaged audience, so it's a really good place for you to grow a business profile because the people that are on Instagram are actually engaging a hell of a lot more than they do on say Facebook. People look and, and you know will view content on Facebook but when I say engage I mean they're actually liking, following and uh, you know even sharing the content that's on Instagram. So it's a lot more engaged. Well, it's also visually appealing so it's a really good place to, to be creative which is another thing that I love about it. Uh, you can really start to showcase uh, who you are and really start to make yourself look great online, bring your brand in and all that kind of thing. It's a lot less distracting as well than Facebook and other platforms because there is only that one feed. So, you know, when you're on Facebook, you're always getting all these different things. I don't know if anyone else gets uh, distracted by the little red dots up the top. I know I'm extremely guilty of that. Uh, so, you know, it is distracting and um, on Instagram you don't have that. It's really clean and it's a really nice, uh, you know, platform to use. So it's great to keep your audience's attention. In fact, that's why I think that they're so much more engaged there because they're less distracted. You've got lots of characters as well to use. When I say characters, you can put lots of text in the copy or underneath your post of your picture. So uh, yeah, like I, I'm sure it's 10,000. I don't quote me because I don't know the number. I've never typed that much in my life <laughs> in one post. But you can actually put loads of text underneath. So you can tell a whole story. You can have a whole blog post underneath each post if you wanted to. Uh, and it, as I said a minute ago, it's curated content with hashtags. So it's a lot easier for people to find things that they want to look for and or they want to follow on Instagram because of those, um, those hashtags. So some important things to consider when you are setting up your Instagram profile with, for your business is we need to look at setting up your bio correctly. This is really, really important because this is where people can come and actually learn what it is. So if they're going to follow you, they're going to read your bio. You've only got 150 
characters for your bio. So that's not many and you use them up quite quickly. So you do want to be really strategic about how you use your bio. Um, and we're going to give you, I'm going to give you a tip in a second about setting that up. It's really cool. So also I recommend using your logo as your profile image. The reason for that is because every time you post, your little logo shows up next to it with your with the name of your account and you really start to create that brand awareness on Instagram as um, as you're continually posting people are coming across you so uh, the other thing you want to do is make sure that you do go in and uh, make your profile picture 160 by 160 pixels so that it fits nicely in that circle and it doesn't get cut off it looks much more professional that way and if you can make it in a circle even better so then you're, you only get one link in your bio. So you want to be really strategic about what that link is. Now I'm going to uh, direct you guys to our link a little bit later, but if you've got a uh, particular link or a goal for your platform, which is the next tip, definitely want to have an objective and a goal for your Instagram profile in regards to how you position yourself there. Um, in your overall social media strategy because if you can think about what you want people to do when they come across you on Instagram, have, make it that your goal and use that link there to direct them as a call to action. So if you want to build your Facebook, say you want to build your Facebook page and that's a really strong goal of yours at the moment in regards to uh, how you're using social media and you've got some stuff going on over there that you want people to be interacting with, say you're doing a lot more Facebook Live or something like that and you want to build your following over on Facebook at the same time you're building your following on Instagram, you could put your Facebook page link as the uh, link in your bio and then you could direct people over to your to your link in your posts and then over into Facebook and you can be building the two together. So that's just one example there. But another really good example is having them opt into your list if you're building a database, which is a really good goal as well. So real quick tip with your bio. Now you can't actually press return when you're typing it out and editing your profile. So what you want to do is actually go and type your bio up in the notes on your phone. So in a text, uh, like a text place on your phone, whether it's an app where you can type text, anywhere where you can type text and then copy and paste it. And then you want to copy and paste it into your bio, where you edit your bio in your profile. It's a really good tip and you'll see a lot of people uh, have got some really funky bios. I'm going to give you some examples later. And the way they've done that is actually by doing that, copying and pasting it in. So switching your business, uh, sorry, your Instagram over to a business profile. Now there's the jury is still out. The jury is still out as to whether this is going to affect you like it has done with Facebook pages. However, one of the, the pros of having a business profile is you get access to valuable insights about your followers, who they are, and the reach that you're getting on the particular post. So as I said at the start, it's all about testing and measuring to find out what actually works for you. And if you uh, you know, have the ability to do that on the platform, then I think it's a great way to learn about people that are actually following your content, who they are and where they're from. So just to give you an idea, um, this is what some of the, the views look like and these are the things that you can see. So timely posting makes a huge difference on Instagram now that there's an algorithm because you want to be posting at the, the the time when most of your followers are online. So as you can see there, you can see that you can actually see when your followers are followers are online on each particular day. You can see where it spikes and you can be posting at those times, which is fabulous. So the other thing that you can do is you can measure the clicks to your website. That means how many people have clicked that link that we just mentioned before in your bio. So if you wanted to track the number of people that follow you or go over to Facebook from Instagram, you can literally see that in here. That's why it's a really good idea to think strategically about how you use that bio and how you use a link because that way you can actually test and measure it here.
The other thing that you can see is your reach and your impressions. Now, to explain what that actually means, Impressions, as you can see on the right, it actually says it there. It's the total number of times all of your posts have been seen. So you can click on individual posts as well and you can actually see how that post performed and you can see how many, how many times your post was seen. Now, when we say reach, that's a bit different. It's the number of unique accounts that have seen any of your posts. So that means they haven't seen it before and it means how much your reach you're getting out on Instagram to new people. So that's a really good thing to be able to test and measure. And if you don't have a business profile, then you can't do that. So that is something that, uh, that I think is just about so, so valuable. And you can also see who your followers are. So you can see who they are. You can see... Um, you can also see how old they are. You can see where they live. You can see so many things about your followers that are so, so valuable. So you can learn about your audience because sometimes we think our audience is one particular type of people and then when we start tracking it and we start following it, at, we actually see who's following us, it's actually someone different. So then you can obviously uh, bear that in mind when you're moving forward. So branding. Branding and standing out is so, so important. Because we all know when you're on mobile, if you think about how you are, when you're out and about, you're probably scrolling along on Instagram and something is going to stand out in the news feed, or in the feed, it's going to have to be, you know, something you like uh, and it's going to have to, you know, be, look good. So we're going to talk about branding. And the other thing that's really important is to make sure that it's consistent. So you want to choose a brand, um, you know, bring your branding in from your other places online, your Facebook page, your website or whatever, and make sure that it's consistent um, each time you post. So that, that gives it a really good look. So that's just a screenshot of our profile there. And you can see that we've chosen a strategy that, you know, it's a little bit different. And uh, we get quite a number of comments actually on um on our particular feed because it is it is just yeah it's just a little bit unique so find something that uh, you like and then you know stick with it for a while and actually start to develop a strategy so that's what I'm my top point to decide on a strategy so our strategy is to curate content based around what we do so we want to provide tips and we want to provide information for our clients that we know are our our clients and our audience that we know they're going to be able to learn from and that they're going to be able to go away and implement. And obviously our hope is that we build that relationship there, we are building that relationship there that if they want to then work with us further, they know where to find us in the link in our bio and then that, that, that relationship can actually start. So that's our strategy and you can obviously think about it. If you've got a store, then you might want to sell products. So you might want to showcase your product in a unique way and obviously be directing them back to that link in your bio to purchase from you. So that's another way that you could, you know, another strategy if you're somebody different, not necessarily educating people. So consistency, consistently using the same fonts is a really good tip. So, you know, we use this font that's from our logo. We've actually bought that font so that we can use it wherever we like. And we have another um, two fonts that we like to use as well. And we use them consistently so that no matter where you are in our feed or if our post pops up in your, you know, in your home feed, you know that it's us. The other thing you want to do is look at using three to four colours that match your brand and don't use too many more than that because it can get a little bit busy. Unless that's part of your strategy, that's fine. But yeah, use three or four colours that match your brand so that when people come across you in the newsfeed, they can see that it's you, again, same as with the fonts. Uh, and the other thing that makes a big difference is using consistent filters. There are so many filters on Instagram. You can actually make your, you know, your images look really great by adding a, a filter over it. But if you use different ones all the time, it can get really messy. And we just recommend sticking with uh, maybe one or two consistently or not at all. You don't have to use a filter. 
and your logo. So it's a good idea to use your logo as a watermark on your post as well. So you'll see our logo positioned in a few different places. Now we don't use it on every post and I recommend you don't use it on every single post because it looks a bit try-hardish. Um, that's just my opinion. But you could, uh, you know, just position it in and around and make sure that, um, you know, if, if you've got an image that you really want to be yours, that if someone shares that image across on Facebook, it's got your logo on it. So you'll know the ones that people are likely to share and therefore pop your, um, uh, your logo image on there. So let's move on to content and hashtags. Now, a lot of people come to us and they, they wonder what they should be posting they, they don't have a clue about hashtags and how they work. And it just sometimes, what I, well, all the time actually, what I find is that when people get confused, they stop. So they might get excited about Instagram for a little while and then they just, yeah, like I said, they get confused or they, they stop wondering, start wondering what to post or they're not getting the results and then they stop. So we want to try and avoid that as much as possible because the most important thing on any platform online, but especially Instagram, is consistency. So you want to consistently um, be there. So knowing your audience is really, really important. And this is we start with our, all of our clients whenever we um, get together with them for the first time. We talk about their audience and making sure that they know exactly who they're posting to because you can't create content for someone if you don't know them um, because how are you going to know what they like. So a couple of content uh, tips and tricks. Now you can mix video and photos together on Instagram now which is fabulous. Uh, once upon a time it was all pictures and then they brought in 10 or 15 second videos and now you can do up to a minute which is fabulous. So you can do little tutorials, you can do little snippets of behind the scenes in your business and you can mix and match video with photos. Video is massive everywhere and Mel is uh, passionate about video and uh, you know the better you can get on camera you know, the better. However, you could even do little moving pictures and post them as a video as well. You don't have to be on camera. You can do uh, little slideshows and things like that and share them as videos, which looks fantastic on Instagram. And it creates that uh, different look and feel. So you take advantage of that space that we talked about below your image. And that means, you know, putting lots of information in there for them to read about that post. Now, you don't have to do that every single time. In fact, I recommend you don't. Just every, you know, every few posts, it's nice to tell a bit of a story and let people get to know you and start to learn more about what you do and that type of thing, depending on your strategy, of course, that you've chosen for your content. With Instagram, it's a great place to let people, when I say let people into your world or personalise your brand because it is all image-based and we've found that a lot of people um, like to actually know who's behind the brand, who's behind the business. More and more now there's, there's more business taking place online so we need to make sure that people are connecting with us because people will buy from those that they know, like and trust and you can definitely achieve that on Instagram which is really something to think about when you're thinking about your content. Another really big tip, you're going to hear me say this a lot between now and the end of this presentation, is to please use great photos. Um, even if you have to take it a few times, uh, you probably might become one of those if, you, if you're posting coffee shots and you're in the coffee shop, you're <laughs> one of those annoying people taking photos of their coffee. Um, but you know what, like you've got to make sure your photos look good because you're your audience is going to, your content's going to stand out. Your audience is going to be scrolling. If they see a fuzzy photo or a dark photo, it's not going to catch their attention. So the other thing that you want to do is look at using themed content. Like I did, um, showed you a picture of our, our um, feed with the different types of, sorry, we have someone at the door. <laughs> uh, we have uh, different types of 
themed content working right the way through our feed and that just makes it um, you know makes it stand out and it makes it look great so you can use those for colors and actually start to create a theme which is a really really great way shoot your images in square format now if you don't know what that means on an iPhone, I'm not exactly sure how to do it on Android, but I'm sure that you can. You can actually set your photos to take them in a square when you actually shoot the picture. It is such a good idea to do that because what happens when you bring your phone, your photo in from your phone onto Instagram, it will crop it into a square. So if you take the photo as a square, then you can make sure that everything's positioned nicely in the in the frame and you know your picture is going to look good when you bring it up. The other thing that is really really good to do is to take your photos in natural light if you can. Um, natural light just looks really really great in the feed um, in it, and the, the, the colors are great you know it's just a really good way to keep it consistent keep that consistent look right through um, then you don't have to use filters either because it just looks fantastic and plan ahead. Now, we are very, very passionate about planning ahead with our posts and we encourage people to plan ahead on Instagram especially because you want to make sure that you know what your feed is going to look like ahead of time. So, I mean, you don't have to, but we just find that if you've got a bit of an idea of your next nine posts, then you can literally start to create that themed look and that nice uh, feed going through because you've actually got a plan. And you know what? You're not posting on the fly. You've got photos sitting there and you've got content ready to go. It saves you so much time and you can be consistent at the times that you post as well because you've actually got it planned out. And again, use great photos. So I'm just going to let it catch up a minute. Now, the brand new stories feature. I was like a little kid in a toy store <laughs> the day that that came out because I had so many people coming to me asking about Snapchat and wanting to know whether it's something they should be using for their business. You know, everyone's talking about it and it's funky and it's fun and, you know, um, I yeah was just not at that point in time wanting to learn a brand new platform and start a brand new following over there but uh, Instagram actually tried or Facebook who owns Instagram actually tried to buy Snapchat not long ago and Snapchat said no um, because they're you know obviously taking off and everyone's going on it so they didn't want to sell it and so what did they do Facebook does this with most things if you can't buy them you just beat them <laughs> or you create the feature within their own platform so that's what stories is basically about over on Instagram now it's actually up the top as you can see there are the little circles so people that you following on Instagram if they shoot a story or they start to capture a story it will come up the top there and you'll be able to click on it and view it it's raw content it's uh, you take the photo at the time you can place um, you can place drawing and text and things over top of the of the photo and really start to get a, a um, get creative so you can use emojis you can record temporary snippets of your day so you can either take a photo or you can take a 10 second video you can write over the video as well, which is quite cool. And you can also select who can see your stories. So you can literally go in to the settings and decide to block certain people if you don't want them to see it, or you can select the people that you want to see it. And um, you know that's just fantastic as well. And you can also see who views your stories which is again such a great way to test who is actually connecting with your content and then you can go and check them out see who they are it's always good as well but you can see the people who have viewed it and you can also see how long they viewed it for so yeah like it's just such a great way to um, engage with your audience now because because of the there you go that's what it looks like <laughs> so because of the 
um, really creative way to do this and the different things that you can do with it, you can literally start to show people behind the scenes of your business. Now, I took these while I was creating this presentation uh, just as a, you know, behind the scenes as a look at, uh, at Mega Media Mentors. And you can just see how you can actually, there's filters, you can use the little text, the emojis, you can put the, the writing over it. It looks fantastic. And it's just an awesome way to um, show people a little bit more about you. Now, with our feed, as you know, it's quite, um, it's quite structured and planned out. And it doesn't leave a lot of room for us to be a little bit free and, you know, kind of off the cuff, which is something that I do like to do as well. So we actually use our Instagram stories in our strategy as a place for us to kind of show that little look behind the curtain, what's actually happening and how we, you know, we can talk to our audience as well. Um, and that's what people do with, with Snapchat essentially is actually, you know, start to really personalise their brand. So we've actually decided to keep our newsfeed nice and clean and structured and planned out as we have and use the stories feature as a way to bring people in and, uh, and show them a little bit more about me and my husband and anyone else who we're working with at the time, just a little bit of a peek behind the curtain. So another thing that's really, really cool is that you can actually upload photos from your camera roll and you can do that from any photos that you've taken in the last 24 hours. Now the great thing about Instagram stories is that content actually does disappear after 24 hours. So it's just a rolling, a rolling 24, rolling day. So whatever, say I took a photo now this morning, tomorrow morning that photo would drop off would be the first one.
same number of times and simply the We've got someone just joined us, I think. <laughs> um, just mute yourself out there if you've just joined us. That way um, you don't interfere with the presentation. That'd be awesome. So, yeah, so being consistent with the number of times and the times that you post is really important. It affects the algorithm greatly. And also creating um, quality content. So, like we've just been talking about content, you want to make sure that it is quality. And using video is also something that is going to help you get more reach. If you can work video into your strategy, even if it's just once a week or once a day, that's going to actually make sure that your content gets seen more because video is being pushed out all over the place at the moment as an preferred content. Um, so using hashtags, your audience uh, will the, that your audience is using will also increase your chances of being seen. So when we we're going to talk about hashtags in a second, but if you can use hashtags that your audience is searching for, then that's going to increase your chances with the algorithm as well. On that note, who is confused about hashtags? It's like hashtag confused. I uh, quite often have conversations with our clients about hashtags and it's actually not that difficult to understand once you know, but it just comes down to a bit of research uh, to figure out which ones you should be using. We're going to talk about that in a second. But basically a hashtag is used online, not just Instagram, it's used nearly on every platform, to organise and categorise content. So it's really just like a keyword on Google. It's just a way of curating that content and categorising it for people to find. So it makes content searchable and optimised. And it also becomes, uh, the, the content then becomes discoverable, discoverable, I should say, on other platforms as well because that hashtag is on Google. It's on every platform um, and it means that you can be searched and discovered in other places. It helps you to gain exposure um, by using great hashtags. So we're going to look at how you actually do that. So. The most important thing with hashtags, especially on Instagram, is to do your research. You want to make sure that you've checked out the mm. hashtag, especially if you're going to use one consistently, like a lot. You want to make sure that the content that is also being associated or categorised with that content is content that you're happy to be associated with. Because if someone searches for that hashtag, your content is going to come up next to theirs. So you want to make sure that the content is, you know, somewhat decent. <laughs> we'll just say that we don't want to be coming up uh, with content that um, coming up with content that that doesn't match you and what you're trying to portray. So you can use up to thirty hashtags in a post. Thirty is a lot, though. So I recommend uh, just going not using too many at the same time. The optimal number that I have found, uh, and this has been actually not just from me, but I've seen this around a lot and mentioned a lot, is 11. So for whatever reason, it just seems to be the magical number. So you can use up to 30, as I said, but I would just pick, say, you know, 11-ish and use them consistently and start to get people, start to curate your content with those hashtags after you've done your research, of course. Another really good tip with hashtags is to only use three in your actual post. So pick the top three that are most relevant to whatever it is that you're posting and place those three in the copy of your post and post it. And then if you want to put the rest of your 11, you can actually post them in a comment, in the first comment of that post and it will still actually come up as content. It will still be curated with those hashtags. It just looks a lot cleaner. And the other thing is that if you're going to um, auto link or share that particular post over on Facebook, it's not cool to use 30 hashtags on Facebook. <laughs> it's actually um, uh, just doesn't look good and it's not a platform that really uses hashtags all that much. 
it is getting a bit more so these days because people are sharing over from Instagram, so they're, we're getting used to seeing them there. But still, I find three is enough over on Facebook. So if you actually auto link your post over onto Facebook, then only those first three are actually going to go across, um, and that's a really good thing. Let's get some water. Okay, so make them relevant by doing your research, as we said. And the other good thing to do is to find hashtags that are actually trending. And what we mean by trending, it means that they are actually being used a lot in your niche. So it's a trending hashtag. It's a hashtag that, for whatever reason, is taking off because it's being used a lot. And as long as you're going to attract the right people that are using that hashtag, you can literally piggyback off of that trend and start to get your content associated with that, that hashtag as well. While we're on uh, choosing hashtags as well, you can actually... Um, create your own hashtags. So if you wanted to create one for your brand, you could choose whatever you like, you could abbreviate it, you could have an acronym, you could do whatever you wanted to with that hashtag and use it, create a brand new one and use it for your brand on every single post. And that way, if once that hashtag catches on and you can obviously drive that on all your other platforms as well, that hashtag is going to brand you. So if anyone searches it or clicks on it, all of your content is actually going to be curated under that hashtag. It's a really, really cool way to get people to find you. Um, but it's a long-term strategy, though, because obviously if it's not a real word or if it's something that's abbreviated or, you know, it's a something you've created, then it will take a little bit of time to, ca to catch on. You're going to drive that with your marketing and your other content in other places. But you can use it on your products. You can use it. You could use it on your print material. You could use it everywhere and actually really start to drive traffic uh, with that hashtag, which is really cool. Alrighty, almost at the end. So I'm going to share now um, some of the things that are really working, some of the strategies that I'm seeing working a lot over on Instagram as far as some of the influencers and some of the people that are already rocking it over there. So these are some strategies that you could start to implement, uh, implement, I should say, yourself. And one of them is collaborating with others who have the same audience as you. Now, I don't mean your direct competitors. I mean people who say you're a hairdresser and you have obviously a similar audience to somebody who is a beauty therapist. You could actually share your audience and collaborate with them by sharing each other's content. So you don't have to come up with all the content yourself. Uh, you could actually share each other's content. You could tag each other in each other's yeah. content because that means that th that audience is going to come across you if they are already following the other person. And the same goes for the other person. They're going to come across you, your uh, per person you're sharing for. The other thing that you can do is what's called a share for share or at S4S, if you ever see that hashtag S4S, is actually it stands for share for share. And what that means is that you can find somebody who has a big audience and that audience, you have to do your research and make sure that it's the audience you want to attract. And you can actually do free ones, but you can also find paid ones and you can share a, or they can get, you can get them to share a post for you to their audience and tag you back in the post. You can even find some people who will change the link in their bio and direct it back to a call to action or something that you've got that you want to have people opt in for or drive traffic to. It's a really, really great strategy. It does take some research because you can get ripped off, so you've got to be careful. But I would start with some free ones and just you know find some people who've got a bigger audience than you. If you've got great content, they're going to be happy to share it because you're helping them come up with good content that their audience likes as well. And as long as you're not competitors, there's no reason you can't do that. The other thing you can do is you can tag influencers or even tag your followers in the copy of your post. Now, when I say tag, what you basically do is you use the at symbol and you type the name of their profile and it will actually create a tag or link them back that post back to that person. So you can click on it and it will actually go to their account. 
it's a really great way to get the attention of people who are already influencing others on, on Instagram. So when I say an influencer, that doesn't necessarily mean somebody that's famous like a celebrity. That could actually be, say you have, I'm going to go back to the beauty example, say you have a beauty product or something that you want to attract an audience to your, your, beauty, your beauty industry, your beauty profile, you could go and find somebody that's say perhaps a young girl who's got a really big audience and they're highly engaged, they're liking and commenting on her posts and you can ask her if she would post for you or in that post as well. And you should her followers. Um, so that's a really good way of getting their attention first and maybe do a for share after that. Uh, posting photos from followers. So this is uh, kind of links in with contests and competitions. Something I see working a lot on Instagram is people um, actually running and posting the photos from their followers. And so the Ben and Jerry, uh, Ben and Jerry's ice cream, they did a really cool one recently. Really, really cool way to um, to get photos from your followers to post and actually starting to to get their attention. Part with influencers, we talked about that, and really important thing, and this always works, is consistently posting great content, as I've said a number of times already. So, a couple of uh, quick little profiles at the end here that I just found uh, they've really got a big engage. You can write them down and go look them up if you like. A couple of things about these guys. So this is one of my favourites, Travels Post Media. It is really cool. They do interesting photos from all around the world. I know that they're not all their posts. They do get them from uh, contributors. And you'll just see when you click on, I can't, obviously this is just a screenshot, but you can see how funky and really different eye-catching these images are. And they, t they tag the location of where they're taken as well. And they get some really great engagement on shares on their posts. The other um, thing that I love about, um, just check your mic, guys. And, um, we can't see your screen. We just see you. Oh, you can see me. Yeah. <laughs> Did I? Maybe. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> They can't see the screen, they can see you, is that right? That the whole time, or just now? Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> it came back after it I cut out for a while. Oh, it cut out for a while, did it? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Here we go. Thank you for that, Amanda. That's Thank okay. You. Everyone, and then present. Present. Can you see that now? Yes. <laughs> okay, fab. They'll get the recording on. They will get the recording of this, so they will. Check. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. We'll make sure we'll go back and look at it. Yeah. And watch it. <laughs> if we've stuffed up and we weren't showing the screen when we needed to, we'll we'll just re-record it. Yeah. Uh -huh. No yeah. problem. Awesome. So I was just talking about Travel Spot, Travels Post Media, one of my favourite accounts. They've got some really funky images and you'll notice um, another thing that's really great about these guys is their, the way that they're utilising their bio. Uh, it's fabulous. They've got the little emojis and you can also see who they're, who's following them that's, that you're following and all that type of thing. They've got some great, um, they've only done 84 posts and they've got 63 and a half thousand followers. It's incredible. Uh, this one over here is a verified page, which is that little tick, blue tick there. So it's a verified business. It's a shop. And they have, they just post really classy looking guys, which, sorry for the dudes on the call, but isn't bad. <laughs> um, but, you know, they have a shop where they, they have a really high following of men on their, their, their page because they sell men's clothes, but it's a really, really classy uh, page to follow and just to get ideas from even. These two ladies are branding themselves so you can see they're not using their um, their logo there, they're using their base because they have their own personal brand which you can do as well if you want to. 
Um, who's got that cute little bubby that I can hear? <laughs> You're having a chat with me. So these guys have um, a they very similar following. So they have, they're actually probably really more competitors, but they they do things similar and they get similar results in the sense that they've got those that themed layout happening that I mentioned before. So using those colours, and if you go and actually click on these um, when when you get off this webinar, you can go and check out what I'm actually saying. You'll see that their following is so engaged. They absolutely love what they're posting. You can see how they ask a lot of questions um, for their audience as well to make sure that they're, they're hitting the mark. Um, I recommend following Instagram. Uh, really good idea because it is their platform and you can really start to learn what it is that's working and and you know, start to see what you could do. This is actually a profile that their community, that there's in the, the people that work for Instagram, Instagram's community team, actually post and contribute to together. And on the left is a fitness profile. So this is this lady's got a highly engaged audience. She posts little workout videos, lots and lots of video, which has really built her account in a huge, huge way. And um, it's not the best looking profile when you actually go and, sorry Emily, <laughs> when you actually go and look at it, it's quite cluttered and messy, but the images are all really good and she does a lot of video and I believe that that's one of the reasons her profile has grown so massively. Again, you can see that the, uh, the way she's used her bio is it's quite cool as well, the little emoji, so it catches people's attention. Okay, so we've reached the end of uh, the what I had to share with you guys. I'm not sure if we had any questions there, Mel, or I could come back and answer the questions yeah. underneath later. Yep. The other thing I thought I would do is actually um, do some live videos to answer those questions as well. Um, that's still sharing, yeah. I think so. Uh, so that I can actually... <coughs> engage with you guys and get to know you. So if you'd like to come go over and follow us on, on Facebook and Instagram, that would be great. It's just at Mega Media Mentors. And I have a special little offer for you guys uh, today, which is if you click the, click the link in our Instagram profile, which you'll see I talked about using that strategically, you can actually download our free social media blueprint and our social media blueprint will give you lots of ideas on some of the other platforms. And also, it has um, the ability for you to get onto our email list. And we're going to let you know about some really cool things that we have coming out in the next couple of weeks. We're actually going to be um, launching a brand new online profile, a program, I should say, that um, you guys may like to um look into and get some more education. So I'm going to hand you back over to Mel for a second, I think. She's sitting next to me again. <laughs> so, stop sharing. Can you see us now or can you still see the slide? Press escape. Escape. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Ah. Here we go. All right. So thank you so much, Megan, Megan, for sharing all those okay. fantastic, um, <laughs> fantastic tips. And I've got a little gift here that I'd like Aww. to give you from um, myself at Empowered Mums and Michelle Harvey from Lily Taylor Designs. Oh, we love Michelle. Thank you. I've actually got, I've got my last one on. Look. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, and actually, you should definitely go and check out uh, Michelle's profile because she is doing a fabulous job on Instagram. Mm. So a little shout out to you, Michelle. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lily Taylor Designs. Lily Taylor Designs. Yes. yes. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me and thank you for being such a great audience on my first ever webinar. Yes. It yes. so scary. So I think I actually um, sent out the link for the broadcasting room, not the public viewing platform. Oh. So we only had 10 people on, but I, I, I did re-email everybody the link to our YouTube channel because okay. they can watch it there as well. Okay. Um, and I've just asked people if you could go into our YouTube channel and um, which you, you can click here and see the recording and just let us know your name and your business name, um, put your Instagram um, profile there for us to connect with you uh -huh. and also um, if you've got any questions for Megan because she can go back to that and then she's got extra content there that I she do. can do little short videos to mm -hmm. boost her Instagram profile. Yes, definitely and show you how it's done. Yes.
<laughs> leading by example. Love it. So thank you, thank you so much, ladies. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to bringing you more of these online masterclasses. I know it's not always easy to get out to events, and uh, we've got some amazing guest speakers from all around the world on many different, um, many different things that uh, we can educate you to do with your business, your health and well-being, and your spirituality because that's what Empowered Mums is all about. It's about helping you reach your goals in life and business. So thanks again, ladies, for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mel. No worries. <laughs> okay, see you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.